What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS and iPadOS 15.0.2 to the public less than two weeks after the release of 15.0.1 and in addition to the iOS and iPadOS updates, we also got watchOS 8.0.1. But in this video, we're going to be covering everything new in iOS and iPadOS 15.0.2, including the new changes, the bug fixes, performance, battery life, and whether or not you should update. All right, so taking a look at the size of this update, you can see here it came in at just under 600 megabytes on most of my devices. It came in at 589 megabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro, but that size will vary depending on your device and the version you are coming from. Now, as far as the build number goes, if we go to our settings, general about, we can see the new build number here is 19A404. And if we go down to the modem firmware, that is unchanged here from 15.0.1 to 15.0.2. So it remains at 1.00.03. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 15.0.2? So this, of course, is going to serve as the second bug fix update. Again, we don't expect new features and changes, like major changes, until the big point releases like 15.1, 15.2, and so on. So these point updates, these 0.0.1 and 0.0.2 are going to be the bug fix updates. And we have quite a few bug fixes here in this update. And the first one is a fix for photos that were saved via messages. So if somebody sent you a text message with photos or videos included, and you save them to your camera roll, but then after the fact you deleted that message thread or just deleted those you know, photos from the message thread, then it would also delete the photos from your photo library. So that was a pretty big bug that has been addressed here in 15.0.2. So those photos will no longer be deleted from your photo library. We also get a couple of fixes in the Find My application. So we have a fix for the iPhone leather wallet with MagSafe, you know, the wallet that sticks to the back of your iPhone via MagSafe that would not properly work with Find My. You're not able to locate it or send alerts or anything like that, like the left behind alerts. So that has been fixed here in this update. And then also the AirTag. If your AirTag did not appear in the items tab right here, which I did see a couple of you guys mentioned in my videos, that should now show up properly in the items tab after updating. We also have a major fix for CarPlay. So CarPlay has been an absolute nightmare, an absolute train wreck since iOS 15 released. But now with this update, we're going to see a couple of bug fixes that a lot of people have been waiting on. So if CarPlay failed to open audio apps like Spotify or Apple Music, and also if it would constantly disconnect when playing music, both of those issues have been resolved in this update. So if you had crashing issues or just issues with playing music consistently without it just disconnecting, you should see those resolved with this update. I've been bombarded with a lot of people talking about CarPlay since iOS 15 was released. Another bug fix in this update has to do with updating and restoring an iPhone 13 and also the iPad mini 6 via the computer. So if you try to update, downgrade or restore via the computer like the finder through finder or through itunes it would just simply not work before it would just give you an error for no reason other than the fact that it just did not support the iphone 13 and the ipad mini 6 but now that process will work properly as expected and then we also get a major security bug fix in this update as well so we have an io mobile frame buffer bug that was exploited so you can see the impact is an application may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited. So it seems like this bug was actually exploited out in the wild. So Apple fixed this with the description here and memory corruption issue was addressed with improved memory handling. And you can see the CVE there is from an anonymous researcher. So that is a big reason to update as well, just because this was used out in the wild. Now we also got a fix for the touch responsiveness bug, at least in the YouTube application. So I've not noticed one time where I've had that issue in the YouTube application since updating. And there was also an update for the YouTube application. So it could have been a combination of the two or just YouTube fixed it via an update to their application but I've not had any issues with touch responsiveness inside of the YouTube application like I've been having for quite a while now so you guys need to tell me in a comment below if it's fixed everywhere because I know some people had touch responsive issues in like the mail application and in Safari so update to 15.0.2 and let me know in a comment down below if those issues have been fixed because I'm not seeing it anywhere 
in this update after updating. I'm not seeing any type of touch responsiveness issues, which is a great sign. And then we might also have a fix for the storage bug as well. So some people still had issues with the storage on the device, just showing inaccurately up top right here. So some people are still having that after 15.0.1, but after this update, you might see that that has been fixed. So I have not had this issue, so I cannot report on that. It's always shown up accurately for me. But if you were having that issue, go ahead and update to 15.0.2 and let me know in a comment down below if it has been addressed. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance feels very smooth and actually a little bit quicker than 15.0.1 so far. But, you know, it's always tough to say for sure until you've been using the device, you know, on this new update for a couple of days. So it feels better, but you know, I really didn't have any issues in 15.0.1. So that's not saying too much, but if we go to my Geekbench here, you can see that we got a pretty solid score here. So we got a 1736 on the single core compared to a 1729 on 15.0.1. And then we got a 4734 on the multi-core compared to a 4774 on 15.0.1. So slightly lower on the multi-core, but slightly higher on the single core right there. But overall performance is pretty good. I mean, I really don't have any bugs after this update. So Apple's done a great job of addressing a lot of the issues we've been talking about here on the channel for the past month. Now, as far as battery life goes, battery life is, you know, the same situation as the performance. So it's gonna take a few days to see how battery life holds up. And that's exactly why I do these follow-up videos every single Saturday. So I do a follow-up video to talk about how the performance and battery life has been performing on all devices. But so far, battery life seems fine. And my battery life on 15.0.1 was excellent. So if you go into my battery graph right here, so of course this doesn't always show the full story, but battery life has been excellent for me on 15.0.1 on my iPhone 13 Pro. I can go at least one full day without charging it, which is nice. So now should you update to iOS 15.0.2? And I say, absolutely. If you did not update to 15.0.1 last week because you didn't have any of the issues that were addressed in that update, like the unlock with Apple Watch issue and the storage bug, then this update right here, 15.0.2, is going to be a solid one since it addresses a lot more of the more wide spread issues, including a security patch. So I definitely think it's worth updating, especially if you skipped 15.0.1. All right, so now what's next here for Apple? So I did predict last week that we could see a 15.0.2. I did say it was a possibility, and we did end up seeing that today on Monday the 11th. So I don't think that we're going to see a 15.0.3 only because a 15.1 is coming very soon. So we are currently in the beta stages for iOS 15.1, and I would expect to see a release on the final week of October. So the week of the 25th right here is when I think we're going to see iOS 15.1 released to the public, maybe on the 26th or the 27th, although Apple has been liking these Monday releases lately. So we'll have to wait and see, but I am thinking we're going to see an RC build of 15.1 for developers and public beta testers on the week of the 18th, and then the final release sometime in this final week of October. And that update will be a very exciting one. It's going to bring a lot of new features, including the share play feature for FaceTime that will be making its return in 15.1 so everybody can use it and i've also noticed that's a lot more stable than it was in the ios 15 betas which is a great sign but anyways guys there you have it that is ios 15.0.2 just a minor bug fix updates as expected but definitely one that you should go ahead and update to so if you guys enjoyed this video i would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and of course make sure to subscribe so you don't see my ios 15.1 video which will probably be a lot more exciting than this one because we have a lot of new features and changes coming in that update but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon